Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press and I have with me today Randy Lundeen. Randy is the Senior Worldwide Product Manager for Multi-Node Servers. How you doing Randy? Good. And so today we're going to be talking about our new Multi-Node Servers. These are the Think System SD530 V3 and SD550 V3. Um, these are multi-node servers. Randy, what is, what is a multi-node? Well, a multi-server is a half-wide modular server that multiple servers fit into one common 2U chassis and it provides a very dense platform for the customers. And what, what type of workload would be best suited for this, this type of, of uh, server? Most of the workloads are for these servers are high compute requirements. The high performance computing, transaction processing, big data analytics, content delivery. These are applications that require a lot of compute, maybe not a lot of onboard storage or very high memory requirements, but compute focused. Right, yep, okay. So the service we have here are in, in the one enclosure, there's the SD530, which is the one U server, and in fact we have two of those installed in the in this um, Think System D3 chassis, uh, and on the, on the other side we have a two U SD550, and you can mix and match these, right? Yes. Um, so you could have we could have a configuration with four of the SD530s if if we want to have, or two SD550s. Yeah, most commonly the customer would put for the same type in the chassis yep, yep. or two of the same type in the chassis, but you certainly have the ability to mix and match servers within the common chassis. Mm. And the two systems share a lot of uh, components as, as we'll show you when we look into those systems. But you can see it from the front that they do have a, a, a different drive configurations um, to, uh, and that can be depending on what application you want to use. Right. Those, yeah. Right, so let's have a look at the, the, the systems. Um, actually, before we go, let's talk about the, the enclosure itself, the, the D3 chassis. Right. You say it's a, it's a shared system. Um, what's common and what's uh, not, not shared? Yeah, it's, pretty, it's a pretty simple chassis. The chassis, the 2U chassis, holds the two to four servers and provides a common power supply in the back that we'll show in a second when we spin mm. the server around. Yeah, well, actually, let's just do that right now, yeah. So you can see um, that the the chassis has th up to three power supplies. This one has three installed. Um, not all applications will need all power. So Mo most applications where you can get by with two power supplies, but it certainly has the ability for up to mm. three. But the the key thing here is that the the power supplies are shared between all servers installed. Um, the, each server does not have its own power supplies. It does have its own fans, its own management. Right. Um, everything else is, is uh, uh, just for that server, networking, right. for example. Um, but it's the power supplies that are shared between yes. them. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's uh, spin this round and take out the SD530 and look at that, that server. Right. So... This is the One U SD530, um, and the uh, l let's talk about the the, the front components yeah. and what's in the back, and then we'll open up and have a look. Okay, inside, good. Right? Yep. Yes. So the front of the server, um, the ports on the front, uh, VGA and uh, USB ports. There's the operator panel there, and a serial port um, is uh, available to all the. Sorry, these are standard for all the systems, um, and this this. Uh, cover here, if I unscrew that with a thumb screw, this then gives me access to the two drives. The SD530 has um, support for two uh, E3. E3.S um, NVMe drives. Yes. Yeah, um, E3.S is a, a fairly new form factor of drive NVMe, um, and, and this server supports two of those. Uh, hot swap drives, um, you can configure them as RAID, um, if you if you wish, but that's that's suitable for the, for internal storage. Right. Um, um, the front also has the uh, a pull out uh, tab for information for uh, local networking MAC addresses and things like that. Um, and the back of the server, uh, the the SD five thirty has um, one OCP slot at the front, and it has a single uh, PCI by sixteen PCI Gen five by sixteen slot. It's a low profile slot, mm -hmm. and that's a sort of a, a slot you would use for GPU or networking or um, external uh, SAS uh, um, storage. Right. 
connectivity, uh, fiber channel connectivity, for example. These things are all supported on this system. Um, at the back also is a um, uh, remote management Ethernet port and two USB uh, ports additional and a uh, display port, a mini display port connector for local video. So if you want to have access to that, um, you can access video from the rear, rear of the system as well. So that's the front. On this yeah. here, yeah. Make sure you point out this. So the, you notice the server is cut out here, and that's, that's right. because that's where the common power supplies dock into the servers. Yes, yes. And that, this connector here is the, the power and signal control through to the, the power supply black, back plane in the, in the chassis. All right. So let's open this yeah, up. Let's take a look at yep. the inside of it. Okay. Okay. So. This is, our, this is the ST530 again, uh, one year server but with two Intel Xeon 5th gen uh, processors um, and it has, each processor has eight memory DIMM slots, DDR5, uh, for a total of 16 DIMMs if you have two processors installed. Um, the, this is the front CPU, the rear CPU has an additional uh, Neptune thermal transfer module to aid with the cooling mechanism of the server, that's what uh, this radiator here is and the, the two the, the four uh, copper pipes yep. connecting to the, the main heatsink. Um, the server, Randy, has four um, uh, fans, cooling yep. fans, um, 40 millimeter, I think, these are from memory. And this is unique for Lenovo. We, we put our fans for each node, each server, in the actual node. Um, most of the competitors will put the fans in the chassis and they'll be shared amongst all of the nodes. Well, the disadvantage of that is if you have an issue with any one of those fans, it impacts all two or four of the nodes within that chassis. In our case, anything that might happen to these fans only impacts this server, it does not impact the other servers. They can keep running at full speed because they have their own cooling. And at the front of the server, we have two M.2 drives these are actually under this, uh, this cover here, and you can uh, use those for boot functions, OS boot functions, or as additional uh, uh, storage, if you, internal storage, if you wish. Um, you can use the Intel VROC functionality to implement RAID, RAID 1, if you, if you wish, as well. So those are there as well. Um, down this end, Randy, you've got the, uh, the PCI slot. PCI on yep. the top, and the OCP uh, NIC card slot on the bottom. Yeah. Alrighty, so that's the SD530. Let's open up the, pull out the SD550 yep. as well. So Randy, this one, this 550 is actually installed upside down, right? Why is that? That allows us to design one format of this node and server um, that will fit either on the left side or the right side. The ones on the right side will, will be flipped upside down, but the server was fully designed to uh, enable that and support that. So there's no left version and right there's version. There's no left Customers or right. don't need to stock two different variations. Correct. Yeah. Um, good. And I would also point out too that, that the servers are designed to be installed um, right way up or upside down. Even the thermal transfer module, the Neptune thermal transfer module, um, is designed to operate um, right way up or upside down. Um, with, with full functionality, full, um, full energy yeah. efficiency and so on, yeah. Let's okay, so, a, yeah, so the, front of the front of the SD550, uh, very similar to the SD530, um, except that, of course, it obviously has six um, uh, two and a half inch drives, mm -hmm. SAS, SATA or NVMe, yep. uh, depending on what configuration you want. The remaining components on the front of the server are the same as we, what we saw with the, the SD530. Uh, VGA, a USB port, operator panel and serial port. Um, at the back of the server, Randy, um, again, very similar to the SD530, most <laughs> obvious difference is an additional PCIe slot. So this, yeah. this server supports uh, full height, uh, half length PCI slots, PCI adapters. Uh, these are Gen 5 by 16 connections. And the sorts of adapters you can have, a pair of GPUs, more networking, uh, fiber channel or external storage. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Other than that, the components are the same. Uh, USB port, uh, remote management, uh, video uh, using a mini display port, and then the, the same OCP adapter slot as on the SD530. Um, let's open these up. Yep. Yeah, I'll do um, did you want to talk about the, the, before you the, the cutout, why that is there? 
Yeah, if you notice, the, the ser e both of these servers have a cutout here, and that's because that's where the common power supplies will uh, reside uh, to come in and power each of the individual nodes. Yep. Okay. So let me point out some of the key differences that you can, you can see here. Um, of course, they both support up to two, power, um, two processors. Mm -hmm. um, the heat sinks on the 550 are a 2U versus the 1U. Um, you'll see that the 550 has larger fans and only three of them versus four of them. And of course, David already talked about the additional storage and the additional um, networking PCI slot on the back. But because of this server having um, a 2U chassis with the better heat sinks, larger fans, there is more um, uh, uh, a little higher power efficiency with this server. It will run a little bit cooler than this server okay. that's that's denser. Yeah, um, I would also add too that the uh, because of this additional physical space here, this server also supports uh, an internal RAID adapter yes. that can go here. So if you didn't want to use the VROC functionality, uh, you can install a right. uh, an internal or CFF. Um, RAID adapter here to provide RAID for SAS, SAS or SATA drives installed at the front. And of course it has the same pair of M.2 drives right. for uh, boot as, as the 530 has yes. as well. Yes, yep. And I would say both of these systems um, use the full X-Clarity management stack of software. Um, they both implement the X-Clarity X-Clarity controller 2 yes. uh, uh, BMC chip. Um, so there's full management in these, these systems, just like the rest of our, our Think System portfolio. So there you have it. This is the Think System SD530 V3 and the Think System SD550 V3, our new multi-node servers. But before we go, let me tell you about where we're filming this video today. We're in the exec Executive Briefing Center here at our headquarters in Morrisville, North Carolina. This is a great venue where you can find out about our new servers and our new laptops and workstations PCs. We have um, access to all this, all these new products here. You can come and check them out. Um, uh, we also have here our development labs. Uh, you can meet with the engineers and find out what they're working on and find out how the, these designs came about. Um, so if you're interested, we'd love to see you. Uh, work with your uh, Lenovo representative to schedule a briefing, and we'd love to see you here. Randy, thanks very much for your time. Well, thank you. Hope you found this video useful, and we'll see you later.